Welcome back to the Ivy Unleashed podcast. Today, we are talking about a somewhat triggering topic. Controversial. Controversial. Just want to preface by saying no judgment, no shame. This episode is about our journey with alcohol. Mm -hmm. What we have noticed, what we are experimenting with. A little bit of science. A little bit of science mixed in there because the more we know, the better we can make decisions. Mm Mm-hmm. And we want to tell the people, you listening, what we have found. Yes. Yeah, it's important to know we're not doctors. We're not telling you what to do. We're going to state some facts about alcohol. And the reason, especially why we want to touch on this again, because we've had some episodes on it, it's very intriguing to people. People Mm -hmm. like to talk about it. If you give up alcohol, they like to ask you about it. Because a lot of people, you know, they rely on it for things or... They can't imagine giving it up or they're curious if you have a problem if you're giving it up, which is so funny because it's literally toxic for your body. So to give it up would make a whole lot of sense (laughs) just for your health, but it, it really provides a lot of, you know, altering the -hmm. way that you feel and people enjoy it. And it does serve a purpose. It does. I mean, it's so there's a lot of great memories I have with alcohol involved and And a lot of terrible ones. Right. So <laughs> that's why it's so, I just think it's so good. And I think we'll always talk about just where we're at with it because people can relate to it. People listening, drink it or mm-hmm. they don't at all. And everybody has their own experience and journey with it. And I just think having information about what exactly is happening and how it actually is affecting our health. And the reason why we're talking about it too, is we are health coaches. Sure You're are. here to help you with your health, whether it's your mind, which alcohol affects, or your body, which alcohol affects. And so first we want to jump into some science because a lot of people just don't know a lot about what's happening within your body. So if if we get into the science of this and you're like, oh, boring, 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 that's totally fine. You can, you can not listen to science part of it, but it's a fact that mm-hmm. we need to know what's happening in our body if we're putting it in it. Like we're afraid of seed oils. We're afraid of uh, carbs. We're afraid of like fruit spiking our blood sugar. Like why aren't we afraid of a toxin coming into our body that's alcohol when we put like five plus in there at New Year's Eve? We don't want to know. Right. <laughs> we just want to know it feels good. But the truth is that you know it's not good for you. Mm-hmm. But what is the risk reward? Right. And that's where alcohol just keeps hanging around because <laughs> sometimes it's rewarding and it, it helps you turn your brain off. We'll get into that. But first of all, just some science. Andrew Huberman is a scientist that we love. Yes. He has a podcast. He's always on other people's podcasts. He's always laying out facts. He's dropping research. He's dropping. And the way that the reason why we love him is because he can talk all nerdy and we can understand Stand it. Like, he's like Justin. My husband's like a nerd engineer, but he's in sales because he can talk to people. Like, usually people in these roles, they don't know how to interact with the world, so they stay in a lab, mm-hmm. and they're just really smart scientists, right? And I think Andrew Huberman does a great job of laying totally. things out in a way we can understand. So what he talks about, what I think is really intriguing is to think about When we say giving up alcohol, people are like, well, isn't it good to have one drink a day or two drinks a day? Like, I've heard a lot of science around that. And people love to lean on that because then it justifies the behavior. It justifies not having to say no to it, which is fine. It's your life. Live your life. But there was a study that was done in the UK. So this was all around low to moderate intake. This is one to three drinks a day. That's it. This is not like having 20 drinks a week. This is not binge drinking. So this study had to do with low to moderate intake and brain degeneration. So they were talking about the gray matter in your brain, which houses your genomes, and the white matter, which allows nerve cells to communicate together. And either way, even if you're just having one to three drinks a day, you are thinning these brain regions. And the reason why it's thinning is because ethanol, which is an alcohol, is toxic to your body. So it comes into your body. It's converted into something else because it's toxic. Your body's like, whoa, we got to break this shit down. Like, this is not good. (laughs) And so it converts it to acetyl aldehyde. I'm not sure if I'm saying this right, but that's what's created. And that's what helps us feel drunk. And so once the ethanol is created into acetyl aldehyde, it becomes even more toxic. Mm -hmm. 
for some reason, but that's what the body does. It breaks it down and then that your body doesn't know what to do with it. And so you start to feel inebriated. So with that, like that's, that's exactly what's happening. And so when you're thinking about, okay, I'm ingesting this to feel a certain type of way. What we don't think about is we're shrinking our brain. We are thinning this thing out. We are trying to inhibit ourselves, but we're inhibiting the, the longevity of our brain health, which is, you know, like you said, risk versus reward. And it's in the moment, it's sometimes what we choose. And it seems to be the easier choice than saying no and then justifying. But for me, what I'm learning is like, this, this isn't the easier choice because it's affecting my mood. Mm-hmm. So in the long term, so there's more science around this too. So Alcohol disrupts your mood circuits. And so what happens is the first thing it does, the reason why the first drink is so great and probably why we still crave it even when Mm -hmm. we give it up, is that first drink does enhance your mood. It boosts your mood. And then as the alcohol wears off, the serotonin drops off. That feel-good hormone. That feel-good. So then you want another one because you're like, oh, need another one. This is not doing the trick again. Like, oh, I need to have some more. So that's when you have more. But as you have more drinks, the less the serotonin comes. And then all of a sudden, you're real drunk, not real happy. Maybe blacked out. Maybe blacked out. And then... Another thing that that I learned is, and this is something that's in our family, is Mm -hmm. we have predispositions to alcoholism. Mm -hmm. And so what happens for people like Brooke and I, and maybe you, if you have alcoholism in your family, is we are more likely when we're drinking to have elevated levels of energy. (laughs) We feel like we're, you know, we're the life of the party. It's so much fun. And this is also why it's hard to give it up because Mm -hmm. that's what happens to me. I have a ton of energy. I could be up all night. I do feel like I'm the life of the party. And that's a sign that you are more likely to end up having alcoholism because it feels so good. And what's happening in your body uh, metabolically is saying like it can metabolize alcohol in a way that you actually do have energy. So then you tend to rely on it more, drink more often, drink more drinks. And that's where you're kind of on that fine line Mm -hmm. of like this could become a problem. Well, when you're relationship with alcohol your association with alcohol is it makes me feel better it gives me energy why would you want to give that up Mm -hmm. for me it was the one thing that numbed me enough to feel good Mm -hmm. so my relationship with it became I can't feel good without numbing this pain and this substance helps me numb this pain and I can't feel good I can't figure it out on my own but this alcohol thing, that's really helping. Mm-hmm. So how often would you do that? Like your body's in pain. Would you like instantly think about alcohol or would you be like, okay, during the week, I'm going to try this, but on the weekend, I'm going to drink. So when I lived in Florida, after I graduated college, I mean, I went from college drinking a lot. I think a lot of people can relate to that. No shame, no judgment. Nope. I loved it. I loved being the life of the party. It gave me energy. And when I lived in Florida and became sick, I would drink at night. It was normal. Have a glass of wine, but then one wine, one glass of wine turned into two, which turned into three, which turned into a whole bottle. And I think for a lot of people, it's normal to be able to drink a whole bottle of alcohol. They've built a quote unquote tolerance. Mm -hmm. But the more I drank, the worse I felt the next day. Mm -hmm. And then I needed it again. And I wasn't actually healing the root issue because what happens when you drink alcohol is it is toxic. And so your liver prioritizes breaking that down and getting it out of your body. So whatever else you got going on, toxins from maybe the food you're eating or the particles in the air or any disease in the body that your body is trying to heal itself, it can't because it has to prioritize getting alcohol out. So I would feel like I'm taking one step forward and seven steps back anytime I drink alcohol, but it is such a powerful substance that it was so hard to let go of. It's fast acting. And when you're vulnerable and you're in pain and you're like, you know what? No one's going to stop me. And it's right here and everybody else is doing it. Why not? Yeah. It took getting out of that environment, surrounding myself with people who weren't drinking or I felt safe enough to be okay without alcohol. And I think there gets a certain point for everyone, a breaking point, 
where you're sick of your own shit and you're saying this isn't serving me anymore. No one is going to stop me. I have to put a break on this myself. And there's no judgment around people who do drink, people who drink in my circle. That's your journey. That's your life. But for me, it wasn't working for me and I couldn't stop. And anytime I would drink, it was like breaking trust with myself. So I was just on a podcast earlier this morning and they asked, what did taking a break from alcohol really give you? You haven't drank for a while now. What have you seen that has been the biggest benefit? And I said, I trust myself Mm. because when I would teeter between, okay, I could have a drink tonight, that would consume my mind. Mm -hmm. My mind would get so loud that I would just quit and say, okay, give me the drink to shut this damn mind up. Mm -hmm. But when I said, no, I'm done, I'm not drinking, I would have a challenge or I did 75 hard. It was that permission I needed to say, nope, this is a non-negotiable. And that's why I think the power of challenges is so, or I should say that the power of challenges. <laughs> what if that doesn't make There's sense. so much power in a challenge. Yeah. That's where the power of a challenge lies is because it becomes a non-negotiable. I made this promise to myself. I'm not going to do it. And this is six years in the making mm-hmm. of toying with alcohol, taking a little break, toying with alcohol. And part of me now sees it as such a blessing. My body will react immediately saying it doesn't like this. Yeah. And so do I want to heal? Do I want to feel better? Well, alcohol can't be in the mix. Yeah. And I think for you, the listener that, you know, hearing Brooke's journey, it's obviously different than yours. Everybody's journey is different. And the, the one thing that I think we all have in common is that we have a conversation in our mind about it. Mm-hmm. And what the reason why I think this topic becomes, whether you want to call it triggering or exciting, or you get curious or it's intriguing is because... We all get a feeling and have thoughts in our mind when someone gives it up. What comes up for you? So when you see Brooke's streak of 113 days, what thoughts do you have? Do you get curious? Are you annoyed that she's posting that? Why is she posting that? So annoying. I haven't drank in 200 days, but I'm not posting it. Like, What in your mind comes up for you? Because everybody has this story before you go into a drinking scenario Mm -hmm. too. Like, okay, tonight I'm drinking, I'm going for it, right? Or uh, tonight I'm going to bring a bottle of wine. I'll probably have half of it. Maybe I'll just share the rest of it. Or like whatever it is, Mm -hmm. you have a story of what you're going to drink, what you like to drink, what you're going to bring to drink, whether or not you're going to drink. Are you going to drive? Who's driving? Like, these conversations come up and maybe for you, it's just a hard no. I just, I just don't. Right. Mm -hmm. But what Brooke's saying is there, that is so freeing. And that's part (laughs) of the reason why I like having, like right now I'm doing dry January because I don't have to think about it. It's not that dialogue in my mind. And maybe that's not a heavy dialogue for you. It was like, I'm drinking wine tonight. Don't care. That's the conversation in my head over. But typically that comes with a cost and it's science. It's not like something you can avoid. You're not going to feel as awesome as you would feel the next day if you didn't. It's Mm -hmm. altering your mood. It's altering your energy. It's altering your NAD stores. It's altering your gray matter and your white matter. There are things that the reason we're talking about it is because it is affecting your health. It doesn't mean that you don't, you have to give it up. It doesn't mean like I'm saying you can't drink a bottle of wine. It's just saying Like you're having a conversation, you're making a choice about it and it is impacting your health. And so it's intriguing to talk about. (laughs) And if you are complaining about not feeling well, about the life you live, about your energy, your anxiety, your depression, your weight, weight, alcohol needs to be, your skin, your sleep, your relationships. Should we keep going? Yeah. (laughs) It affects everything. It does. And something that's really powerful to think about here. So when we drink, it is boosting that serotonin. But the body's job is to regain homeostasis. And so it has to even out. So when you're drinking and you're upping, upping, upping these levels, the body's pumping out cortisol to rebalance. And that cortisol is only making you more anxious and depressed and on edge and that shame cycle of the next day. So although it might be helping in the moment, that is temporary. Mm -hmm. That feel-good moment, it needs to be 
repeated and again and again and again by more drinks, more drinks, more drinks, which are only adding more toxins to your body. Mm -hmm. So for me, I couldn't just have one drink because I would feel the drop off. Mm -hmm. And I loved the way that it would boost my energy, that it would quiet my mind. But that was one little spike. And then it was like daggers Mm. followed that if I didn't keep going. Yeah. So instead of putting a bandaid on it by continuing to drink more, let's maybe fix the leak here. Mm -hmm. Let's not keep adding fuel to the fire. And when we think about our gut health, which houses our immune system and our, these neurotransmitters, receptors like serotonin and dopamine and our skin health and everything comes back to the gut. When you are drinking alcohol, it is killing the bacteria in your gut. So I was working so hard to heal my gut. And anytime I would drink, it was just like adding fuel to the fire, Mm -hmm. destroying it even more. And that goes for everybody. That's not just your gut. Mm -hmm. That is everybody's gut. It is killing the bacteria in our gut. That's why my stomach is always off after I have a bottle of wine. Like my stomach is not right for a couple days and it's doable. Like I can just have a couple extra bathroom breaks the next couple of days. And that's why for a while I didn't stop doing it. And I, for me, like, I think when you're listening to me talk about it, you're probably being like, does she have a problem? Is she, does she have a problem? Like the conversation about what it's doing to me doesn't mean I have a problem. It means I'm observing Mm. what it's doing physiologically and I'm deciding what I want to do about it. It doesn't mean I have a problem. It means I am observing and finally sick of my own shit, of (laughs) feeling like shit. Like I'm ready to do things in my life and I'm realizing what's getting in the way. Mm -hmm. And with 75 hard, that is so much about being honest with yourself about how you're spending your time and who is in your circle. Those are like the two biggest things. Mm -hmm. And the elephant in the room with alcohol is that a lot of people avoid giving it up because you will figure out who your friends are. And that's scary. You're afraid of what your family's going to say. You're afraid of what your friends are going to say. You're afraid of what they're going to think. Because sometimes that's even like the harder part is like, what are they actually thinking? You know, because this is a vulnerable episode. It's gotten easier to talk about, but I'm not going to lie. Like, I know people are thinking things and assuming things about what I'm saying in real time right now. Let them. Yeah. That's your, <laughs> that's your journey. That's your story. However... Listening to people talk about their experience with alcohol, for me, was permission that I needed to give it up. Mm. To say, there are people talking about how it's really impacting them in a negative way. And if they could give it up, why can't I? Or Maybe per- I can find people. Yeah. Or it's permission to think about how it's impacting you. Mm-hmm. And it's permission to think about having a conversation with someone like, Maybe let's try not to drink this weekend and see what we do instead or how we would feel. Like when you think about that, what stirs up in you? And maybe it's nothing. Maybe you're like, I don't drink. It's fine. But thinking about if you were to give it up, what would happen? Like for me, it got quiet. (laughs) It got really quiet. My phone got more quiet. It got louder from friendships that have a lot of depth, Mm -hmm. that have a lot of like, I just want time with you. What are you doing? Like, I don't care if you're drinking or not. Let's have a conversation. Let's hang out. Let's go on my hot tub. Like I spent a lot of time with my sister-in-law, Alicia, and it was wonderful. And I think it's eye-opening, but it's scary because a lot of people don't want to face the truth of their life. If you do a big challenge and like Brooke's saying, why we do them is because it creates truth about who you are, your willpower, Mm -hmm. how strong you are. A lot of people don't want to face it. A very easy way to see, to, to not have to face how strong you are is to like keep drinking and not give it up. It's, it's a challenging thing and you have to have some tenacity and you have to create boundaries. You have to do some hard things. And I'm so happy I did it. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy I decided to do it again in January because it was like three weeks and to be honest, I think I need to talk about how low I got. Mm-hmm. Like, 
I started drinking, I, I think I went 93 days with no alcohol. And then I went, I went bowling with friends and it was super fun. I had some beers. It was great. The next day I had to lead a workout at 6 a.m. And my heart was, I woke up in a sweat. Mm -hmm. I woke up with my heart racing. And this is the whole reason in the beginning that I even was thinking about doing 75 hard because I'm like, my body told me to give up alcohol before my mind. My body was like, my heart's going to start racing now because I don't like what you're putting in here. You're putting too much of that in here. Yeah, it's sending you signs and, and signals and it's your job to listen to it or it's going to keep getting louder. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I think it's because I think I have some shame around drinking as a mom. Mm -hmm. And so maybe if I just don't drink around my kids, that'll be what it is. My heart's like, nope, this is toxic shit. <laughs> and your heart's going to race. I don't want all of this. This is... My it's heart, not serving you. My heart doesn't know what to do. And the fact that my heart, the thing that is driving my life is going out of whack and I'm waking up in a sweat and then I'm leading a workout with people where I'm trying to lead by example. And I was like huffing and puffing. I was lightheaded. I was honest even with the people I was working on. I'm like, I had some drinks the first time last night. I am, I feel foggy. <laughs> I feel whatever. And so that was my first hint of like, okay, I'm not going to drink before I'm leading workouts. Okay, that's a hard pass, mm -hmm. right? And then I... Over like Christmas, I didn't drink a lot or anything. I was just hanging out with my family. But we went to a water park and I had some drinks with friends like in the hotel room. And as I was going to bed, I was having such low thoughts. It's hard to put them in words when you're in this low spot. Anybody that's been depressed or has had really off days knows that sometimes you just feel worthless. Like you just feel like I bring no value like even saying it's so sad because it's, I know it's not true. That's literally me Ugh. the week before my period. And I have learned, Ugh. do not trust anything I think yeah. and <laughs> that I, week. It makes me think of people that become suicidal because I wasn't suicidal, but I was thinking of my worth mm -hmm. and that I bring no value. Like I was thinking of the people I know that have taken their lives. Like it had to have been so much lower than that. Mm -hmm. And I felt so low and I'm laying in a hotel room a beautiful, awesome resort with my beautiful, healthy family trying to sleep. And I can't because I'm thinking about all the things I should be doing, could be doing, doing more, not be, doing, being more like that thought pattern is so hard to get out of when the serotonin is low. And mm -hmm. it's not all about serotonin, but basically it's, I am messing with the chemicals in my brain mm -hmm. with this alcohol and I cannot keep doing this to feel this way. So that's why I had some drinks on New Year's Eve and then I was like, you know what? I woke up New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, felt the same way, low energy. I went out to coffee with Brooke and Julie, our cousin, and couldn't even form a sentence without questioning what I was saying because I just was so foggy. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is not worth it. Yeah. She sent me a text. What was it? The morning of the first and said, I'm doing, Jan I'm doing dry January. And I just sent back a gif of welcome back. Cause you just finished 75 hard and I love it. I'm here for it because when you remove alcohol from the equation, everything gets better. In my opinion, it might take a little bit cause it is an adjustment. You're kind of rebalancing your nervous system and your things and your priorities and your life. And you're thinking about how do I want to spend my time? What do I do if I'm not drinking? But there are ways to help yourself out. There are ways to make it easier. There are systems to put in place if you do want to take a pause from alcohol. Things like bringing a drink, bringing a non-alcoholic drink that you can get excited about, making a mocktail, always having something in your hand, saying it out loud and telling people for accountability, telling your partner. You know, I would go into situations with Ian, my boyfriend, and I would say, I really don't want to drink tonight. And he'd be like, okay, you wouldn't ask me. Most of the time, it's not even a big deal. No, <laughs> but we make this story in our head of how everyone's judging us and how big of a deal it is. But just the act of saying it out loud holds you accountable. Having a friend in the same event that isn't drinking is like a buddy. You know, finding those little ways where you can keep the promise you make to yourself. When everyone's order a ordering a drink, I would tell myself, just say you're fine now. And if in 10 minutes you want a drink, you can get a drink then. So kind of pushing, creating more of a pause. Yeah. Or anytime I'd feel the urge, I would just get up and go to the bathroom and I would just give myself a pep talk. So I'd put these things in place to preoccupy my mind, to end that conversation of, it's not that I can't have it. 
I'm just going to wait a little bit. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to wait a little bit. I'm just going to sit in the discomfort because this discomfort will pass. Especially in the beginning. Because yes. I feel like once you give yourself time to do that, like, 10 times, then you see like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I didn't drink earlier. But like in the moment, it's hard to see that. Yes. But once you've had the repetition of it. Well, and I never regret not drinking. I always regretted drinking. But the next day I never regretted it. And something important to add is I still think about alcohol. Oh yeah. I still want to drink alcohol. Especially that first one. It is so powerful. Like we said earlier, the power it can have over you. Because what I remember is that feeling of being relaxed. I don't immediately remember or feel it in my body because the body can't really remember pain. So although I know it doesn't serve me and my heart races and I break out and I feel really low and my self-worth drops, what I remember is that feeling of high energy. So I need that pause. I need that self-talk. I need those people in my life that remind me why I chose to take a break. And the longer I go, the easier it is. But it is so romanticized in our culture. I'll watch the Kardashians. I'll watch Selling Sunset. And I'll be like, damn, I really want to go with some girlfriends and have a glass of wine. Mm -hmm. And I miss that. Yeah, and see, I don't always regret drinking. Like, I feel like there's so many fun memories I have where, like, we probably wouldn't have been as goofy or done that stupid thing. And it's, like... For me, it's not always regretting. Mm-hmm. I definitely don't have that all the time, and I don't see myself as, like, never drinking. But I think right now in this season of what I'm trying to do with our business and how I feel it's affecting my body and my brain, this is my choice. Yeah. Like, there's nothing wrong with wanting a drink and and having your drink to turn off your brain because, oh, my gosh, there's an op- entrepreneur and a mom Woo, we are second guessing ourselves. There's always more we could do. We could always do it better. And just my personality type, like, holy shit, turn this <laughs> thing off. But I also think that I need to, and I am finding ways to lean on something else. Mm. Lean on you, lean on Alicia, who I brought up. Like, there's so many people in my circle that are like, really great to talk to about it. Like, my best friend Britt is also not drinking in January. And so you, you find the people that you can lean on Mm -hmm. or you find different things you can do or you focus on your sleep. I mean, there's so many things that, like you said, get better. Your (laughs) skin gets better. Your sleep gets better, which literally affects everything. Mm -hmm. Things will not be as overwhelming tomorrow if you get more sleep. And if there's no alcohol involved in that equation, it's higher quality sleep. Yeah. I just want to say, I don't regret that I used to drink. I have no ill feelings about used to drink. That was a part of my story. It got me where I am today, but I do regret drinking now moving forward because of my health. Yeah. So once I got sick and I kept drinking, then I regretted it. Mm -hmm. But the past is the past and moving forward. I don't want to put myself in that situation where I'm working so hard and I'm feeling better. And then I'm going to throw some toxins in my body. It just doesn't work for me. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's, it's taken me a while to get to this point where I don't feel like I have to justify myself. Mm-hmm. Where I can say, it doesn't serve me. I'm good. Thank you. Brooke, are you still not drinking? Nope. You still doing sober life? Yep. Do I have some thoughts of like, why the f- does it matter? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't serve me right now. And that's not to say, to your point, it won't change moving forward. What's your streak at right now? I don't know how to she look. doesn't even know. That's how easy it is. Well, I will tell you what. You're doing dry January. I'm doing dry 2024. Ooh! I'm gonna. I'm. I don't want to say I'm gonna try because I am doing it. You're doing it. It's like me saying I'm trying to run a marathon in all 50 states. Like I don't know 100 percent that I won't like randomly need a leg amputated and it might not happen, but like I am doing it. I am in the midst of doing it. I am doing it. You are yes, doing it. Yes. So I'm curious for the listeners too, because I know this has been a question of when you share your streak, who and what is that for? When I share things about my health, it is for the girl that I used to be. The woman struggling with her health, the woman needing an influence or a mentor or someone leading the way, showing that by taking a break from these things that you know don't serve you, you are taking back your power. 
There's a very beautiful thing that happens when you stop relying on external substances and can start to rely on internal substances. Substances and internal. Sure. You know what I mean? Yep. To calm yourself. The fact that my breath is free. The fact that I can take a bubble bath, some ebbs and salt. I can laugh with my boyfriend. I can remember our conversations. We can sit there and be sober and giggle. That is beautiful. Mm -hmm. That is a life worth living. Not having to rely on a drink to make me feel okay. That's some good shit right there. That's badass. (laughs) And it's a practice. Mm -hmm. I still struggle with my mental health. I still struggle with my health. And I said it on a podcast last week, and I'm going to keep saying it, that I am not healed. There is no end. I am on a journey just like everyone listening is on a journey. And I am finding these nuggets, these pieces of gold that are making me feel so good, and I want to share it. And I have no shame in that. I have no shame if you want to drink, but for the woman listening who's like, I really need help. I need to take a break from this and I need to hear someone who is taking a break. Like, that's who I'm speaking You're to. Like, I'm your girl. Yeah. And I, I think, I think that is so badass what you just said. Like, I'm like, Oh, that's going, that's going to be going on Instagram <laughs> because there is something so powerful. And what it comes down to is taking a break from it gives you clarity mm-hmm. on what you need. If I didn't have alcohol, what would help me with that uncomfortable feeling? If I didn't have alcohol and I couldn't turn my brain off, what could give it like the hug it needs so Mm -hmm. that it can stay a little bit calmer? It doesn't get to this heightened place. Like we're looking for comfort. We're looking for calm. We're looking for love. I mean, that's what it all comes down to. You're trying to love on this thing, this beast called thoughts (laughs) and they don't stop. And what ramps them up is this nervous system that's not in a calm state. And so that's why we'll constantly be talking about doing things that help your body. It's all about this chemical balance within your body. And alcohol, unfortunately, throws that whole thing off and it affects your body. It's affecting my heart. People that I know Dale, who would love to have a good beer, it ramped up his cancer. So he gave it up. If your health gets to a point where it's in a a fragile state, you won't be drinking. And so it's something to think about. Like he was in his 40s. Like it is not good for you. And I'm not trying to scare you, but what I am saying is like, it's the elephant in the room nobody wants to look at but it can create some clarity and it can really improve your health if you just start to think about it and explore your relationship with, maybe I could do a little little bit less or I could learn something about myself or I could improve my health if I just took an honest look at it. Yeah, it's about being curious. What would change if I took a little break? Even the thought, you don't even have to take a break. That thought, what, what comes up? Yeah. What comes up for you? And if you want to take a break, we are your biggest cheerleaders. Yeah. We've seen the benefits of it. We're not promoting not drinking, but we kind of are because the clarity that comes from fully nourishing your body and your mind, it will change your life. And it has changed ours. And it has changed ours. It's not easy but it is worth it and nothing. Also, I think it is kind of easier. Can I just say one more thing about that? I feel like we're, we're trying to close this up, but one thing I want to say is like a lot of times and what we say is it's easier to have the drink. It's not for me. Hmm. It is not easier to have the drink because lately it's a lot harder for days. When I drank on New Year's Eve, I did not feel like myself for six full days days. And how I know I felt like myself is that energy scared me. I was like, whoa, (laughs) I'm optimistic. I'm happy. I'm moving. I'm grooving. I'm dancing. I'm like, oh, I'm back to me. Six days. And I know that I'm just noticing it more, right? Like everybody else is probably the same. They're just like not hyper aware like I am after doing 75 hard. So it's a lot easier to have six days of feeling like yourself than a couple hours of a handful of drinks. That's my, that's where I'm at. I like it. I like it. 
I think more what I was trying to say was in this society, it's not easy. You are going against the norm. True. But you know what? Maybe being healthy is against the norm and I'm here for it (laughs) because after being in such a dark place, I don't want to go back there. Yeah. I was thinking about people asking, why do you exercise so much? And why do you eat so healthy? And the thought that comes to my mind is, have you ever been depressed? Have you ever thought about not living? Have you ever thought about what would it be like if I didn't have to live with this pain? Because if that was you, if that has ever been you, you know that those things that don't serve you, they are not worth it. So this is your permission to take a break from the things that aren't serving you. Maybe it's not alcohol. Maybe it's relationships. Maybe it's the job. Maybe it's the things that you're using alcohol for. Mm. That if you gave yourself a break, if you gave yourself some space from maybe a toxic relationship, you could feel some joy and bliss and wouldn't need the alcohol. What are you using alcohol for? Is it to turn off your mind? What if you thought some better thoughts and you didn't have to turn off your mind? What if your thoughts were of love and joy and bliss and how can I serve and make the most of this life? Because I don't want to numb that. I want to remember. It numbs everything. It numbs everything. It numbs the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. And that's the human experience. Those dark moments make the beautiful moments so much better. Mm -hmm. And we can ride out those dark moments and lean on our people and the things that really, really help us and nourish our soul and not just numb. Mm -hmm. So thank you for listening. I'm so happy that you tuned in. And I'm so curious about how you feel. And we want to keep this conversation going. It's, it's huge in our culture to have a drink. It's romanticized. And we're here to shake things up a bit. <laughs> and we're here for you. If you want to start a streak, if you have some opinions about what we said, we want to hear it all. Just the conversation is, I think, very intriguing and important. Mm -hmm. And so thank you for listening. Please drop a comment, drop a review, shoot us a DM. You can find us everywhere at Gold Ivy Health Co. And as always, we leave our listeners with three gold stars, which we don't have prepared, and I think we should just riff them here. Um, My first gold star would be to think about when you hear someone gives up alcohol Write down or think, what is the first thing that comes to my mind? First thought that comes to my mind. Second gold star. Think about what purpose does alcohol serve? Why are you drinking? What is it for? And third gold star is what other vehicle could you take to serve that purpose? So if it is drinking to calm your mind, what else could you do to help calm your mind? I love it. And lastly, as we always leave you with a piece of gold, our quote today comes from Chris Williamson. And he says, alcohol is the only drug where if you don't do it, people assume you have a problem. This is Gold Ivy signing off. Listen to your truth and go chase your gold. Cheers to coffee and not alcohol. (laughs) Cheers to tea because coffee is toxic too. Just kidding. And for your next episode, quit drinking coffee too. Take away all your drinking joy.